Welcome to Playoffs Ball, the ultimate destination for all things basketball. Now we'll take you the greatest stories of Kobe Bryant, told by NBA players and legends. You know what I mean? When you want to talk about the swag, oof, Kobe had it. But as a competitor, I knew that Kobe was the one for me that I had. If I wanted to be great, that I had to get on the level of Kobe Bryant. The entire crowd was watching him. Like that's that's the that's the reach. Yeah. Every once in a while, you would see flashes. Yeah, and then he would say some shit, and then the whole room was like, I still couldn't stop it, and I knew what he was about to do over and over and over again, you know. And that's just that's a part of his greatness. Well, guys are on the court out there, and I've asked a number of the guys this: hey, Are you guys uh, talking stuff to each other when you're out there playing and competing? Mm, sometimes. Two hands off. And some of it, I think, is is that he emulated some of the things that MJ did as well, because MJ was a terror in practice. Yeah, he's hard, hard on, on hard yeah, on he was guys, hard yeah. on his teammates. Yeah. It was the first time, you know, you look at somebody and you can't tell if he's looking at you. Like he's looking dead at me, but I'm like, I don't know if he sees me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just like not relevant enough for him, but he couldn't see me, and I felt. It. Yeah, look at you know what? That's as long as this time, relishes it. And he and Gerald Wallace are having a conversation. That's Kobe and Gerald Wallace going at each other. While Kobe's on the free throw line. Gerald's still talking to him. They're still talking to him. They're still having a conversation. As Kobe's about to shoot through the free throw tonight. Rumor has it. The story with Kobe was playing against the 76ers. And Andre Iguodala had done a great job on him. Held him to like 7 foot 20 shoot. So he literally went, when he went back to Philadelphia, he had that date marked on his calendar. So he came to the locker room and he was like, uh, where's Drake? And I was on the court working out, getting ready for the game. And, uh, it was Lewis Williams. It was like, uh, I told Lewis Williams, he said, tell Drake 50 tonight. So I come back to the locker room and Lewis Williams was like, yo, Drake, Drake, Kobe said 50 tonight. I'm always ready to play against Kobe, so I'm like, okay, it's a good matchup. Excited about it. So six minutes to go. Fourth quarter, uh, he has 49. There about like 20. He just subbed out. So, yeah, 49 was six minutes ago. The game was over. So that was an uh, interesting night. Uh, I actually went back and uh, I tracked that game. He made like three threes from like where it's a staple on the side of the court. He made like three threes from like competing staples, which was like far. So uh, yeah, and then we got a lot of pick and roll action. I'll never forget that game. The stories. I remember at USA Basketball. Uh, first practice, you know, he was like, he looked like, like, I don't want to say old, but he looked like, I was like, man, I, I seen like the end, you know, it's like he's starting to decline. I didn't even tell anybody that, I would never say that out loud. But I was just thinking in my head, you know, because he just wasn't moving you know, as, as, as well as he was, he was missing a lot of shots. Middle of summer, so whatever, but then I found out he'd gone on like a 40 mile bike ride at like 11 p.m. that night. Got in at like 2 a.m. He was in the weight room. I got down there at 7:30. So, you know, <laughs> it, it was just—it was funny to me, very fitting to me. I was like in my head, I was too scared to say it to anybody else. But it was like, it seemed like the decline. I was like, oh no, this is working out for 40 hours straight. <laughs> we were in the Olympics, right? And this is when I knew Kobe was a monster. You hear about it, you hear about it, but you really—if you don't see it, you really, really don't. And so we get into a city, uh, one of the cities, very late. And immediately we all go to the gym, you know, all my guys, it's, you know, it's Melo, it's B, it's Brian, it's Kobe. Like we all go to the gym, we all get our work in. It's, re it's real late. And so after we get done getting our work in, me and my guys, we say, hey, like, let's meet for breakfast in the morning. Like if you can't sleep, whoever first one wake up, hit us up, we're going to go eat. And so we do that. We probably get like three hours of sleep. You can't sleep much when you're traveling across the world, you know, like we were traveling. And we get probably get like three hours of sleep and we, we wake up, we go down to where the food is. As we walking down, you know, slumping with, with sleep in our eyes, Kobe Bryant is sitting there with ice on his knees already, right? So we walk up to Kobe, like, Kobe, what, what's up? And he was like, oh, uh, yeah, man, I just finished uh, finished the workout, and uh, I'm about to go do another one. And at that moment, I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> we just worked out about three hours ago, you know what I mean? And, like, you've done another workout, and you're about to go do another one? That's when I was like, okay, I got to get my stuff together. I got to get my shit together. Because this dude right here is on a whole different level uh, than even I'm on. And I'm supposed to be great, right? So that's the kind of person he was. And that's how he drove me. 
you know what I mean? Like this, this little stuff like that. I went back and said, okay, that means I gotta work hard and I gotta do more. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to share that little. And it's great. It's a beast, man. He he had a lot of respect for guys who busted their butts. You know, every single day, being that they were very talented or not. But if you came to work every single day and you didn't bag down to him because he would test you. You know, that's the one thing I loved about it. He would right. test guys in practice. How would he test them? Oh, elbowing them, uh, talking to them, you know, telling them they can't guard him. You know, you got this guy out here and this guy can't hold my jock. You know, but I mean, he would talk so much stuff and he would really just to see how you're going to react to it. Watch me the rest of the script. Right, script. Show hands off. You know, uh, and some of it I think is is that he emulated some of the things that MJ did as well, because MJ was a terror in practice. Yeah, he was hard, hard on, yeah, hard he on was guys. hard on his teammates. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, I, you know, even the last two years I had him here. I wouldn't allow him to practice much, but there were days where he was like, well, B, let me just scrimmage. I was like, yeah, that, that sounds good. So you know, we're going to scrimmage at about this time. Come on back out and get yourself back loose and we'll let you scrimmage. And he would be in the scrimmage talking the whole time to guys, to Nick Young and Jeremy Lance and Carlo Boozers and just, and I would sit there sometimes and say, as you're not going to say nothing back? What started that back and forth though? Um, it was like, it was like a testing day for Kobe to test, like Jeremy Lin, test me, and test like Wesley Johnson and yeah. other guys. So, like from the start, he was killing Jeremy Lin. Like I guess he wanted Jeremy Lin to be something he wasn't, but he was killing from the start of the practice. I don't know why we got him. Why is he here? Um, he had one good year, talking crazy. Like, but during the practice, I'm up here like Jeremy Lin. Come on, man. Can't let you can't go out like this. We ain't going out like this. Good. Not today. I'm get mad like Jermaine. Come on, man. Kobe, y'all soft like Sherman. Oh, I can't even get better practicing with y'all. And he would do it to just see which of these guys he could be in that foxhole. That's when I was like, all right, Cole, you talking too much. You can't guard me. Guard, stop guard me. Wow. He was guarding Jeremy Lin. Guard me. Oh. Yeah, guard me. <laughs> hey, that part. Yeah, guard me. And then we start going back and forth. Like I said, nobody in the world can guard me. That's where it comes from. Nobody in the world can I said, nobody in the world can guard me. Oh, he said, look your mouth in the world. Damn, I ain't good, so, bro. He too that's a lie. So we go back and forth. It was fun. And then the next day, you know, he won and won a game. And he was like praising us and all that. I love the when you waved them off. I think it was against the Spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, was, was, that, that was right after that. Oh, it that was, was right after that. In that in the interview, about. I said, <laughs> I, said I feel like about the Sherman tissue or something like that. Yeah. You know, from the yesterday practice, you know, Kobe talking all that trash kind of uh, inspired me today. So, so, yeah. so I'm like, so I'm like, yeah. I feel like crazy respect, crazy. Like, Nick's got that mentality <laughs> yeah. that, like, yo, I'm going to still shoot, I'm going to play my game, and Kobe understands that. You know, which of these guys I can trust to have my back when I'm going to go? It's a test. It's a test. Yeah. And he was always, you know, you know, testing guys to, in that way to try, try to find out. You know, which of these guys I can trust and, and go to battle with. Now Young with two. Let's it fly. It's good. Nick Young for three. And the Lakers lead with 7.4 remaining. Young sixth triple of the night. Like we had a plug ego man. We had a blowout. <laughs> <laughs> we got blew out in, uh, in Portland. He was getting blew out in uh, so everybody, um, Kobe's in the locker room just waiting for everybody to come in. And you know everybody, 
and they got Kobe's on the team. So. Yeah. He come in. He came in the locker room. And he was like, from now on out, every time down the court, I touch the ball. Y'all go learn what it's like to play with Kobe Bean fucking Brian. I don't know where these shoes and y'all soft ain't gonna do here in LA. So I'm not thinking nothing of it. He tells everybody to take their shoes off they Kobe. I'm like, what? Okay. Oh, this motherfucker's oh, serious. This is a dead ass serious. But, <laughs> like, what's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? <laughs> nah, take them off. Take them off. There's some Nick Young playful ass. We go, we shower and she would come back. And y'all did? And we took them all. We uh, <laughs> dropped them in the middle of like the... Uh, in the middle of the like He found them all. He just started grabbing people's shoes. He just threw them, he threw them all in the trash. Oh, and wow. Like, y'all don't deserve these. We shower and shit. We come back. Nick walking in the locker room. Us, huh, y'all better throw that motherfucker the ball. There's going to be some shit around here. Right so, up. Like, Nick never took anything serious. <laughs> Which I'll start coming with. Yeah, come back in LeBron's and stuff right. like that. What y'all say? Did anyone want to split it? I ain't going to win those anyway. But we just got the shit kicked out of us. Cold wasn't going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I just think mentally, like, he meant that shit. My Kobe story is we, we were in the player lounge. There was a couple of us, um, and we are playing space. And he kind of came in. We were drinking a little wine, and his face just chilling. And he came in, sat down, poured himself a glass, and he was kind of like reading a paper. So this is 2008. So they had just lost to the Celtics in the finals, like tragically, memory serves. And so he opens up the paper, and there's like this article about it, and there's a picture of Paul Pierce. So I see it. We kind of are, and you know, like it's Kobe Bryant. This is 2008. We're all sitting there. Kobe Bryant sits down and pours a glass of wine. We're like, what the fuck, <laughs> you know? And then we look over and he's tearing out the picture of Paul Pierce. So he cuts it out, he folds it up, he puts it in his pocket. And like, we're all looking at him, you know, like what's, what's going on? He's like, motivation. And we're like, okay. Oh. <laughs> and then he proceeded to like chug his wine, pour another glass, chug it, pour the third. And he was like, basically like, <laughs> he looks over and he's like, now I'm one ahead of you guys. We we're like, oh. that is great. That is such a great story. I. So when I hear those stories about Kobe, and I hear from so many people, I'm like, yo, was he really like? Was some of it uh, performance art? Like yeah. some of it was like, I've got to, I've got to live up to this reputation. Like, who does that? You know, the real world. Yeah. That used to be on M- MTV. Yeah. Uh, Kobe was a rookie. Arn was my agent as well, and I was the elder statesman of the firm. And Arn called me up and was like, do you, want, do you mind talking to this young kid? Show him what the NBA is all about, how to conduct yourself. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll talk to this, this kid. We were set to play a game of basketball versus the, world, the real world cat. It was shot in Hollywood. And all I remember is Gail continuing to say to me, look, when you guys get there, you're going to get there before the cast of the real world. All Kobe wants to do is play you one-on-one. He wants to play you one-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one. I'm like, look, I'm 10 years in. This is 96, 97 year that summer. So he had one year in. So I'm 10 years in. I'm not going to play this young cat one-on-one. I'm like, all right, I'll play a soft game of one-on-one. But our focus should be going against the real world (laughs) cast. (laughs) So we get there and... We're playing soft one-on-one, and, you know, I'm doing my step-back jumper. I know you've alluded to this before. And he's like, how do you do that move? And, I, you know, I kind of show him because I was trying to take things from him as well. He had this killer crossover. I'm like, well, how do you do that? So we're exchanging our go-to moves. Well, a conversation turned into text messages and phone calls every day. Because, like you said, he was gathering information. We reached the Bulls in the conference finals, and he was like, so what was it like going against Jordan? He wanted to be bigger than life. And at that time, that person bigger than life, and still is, is Michael Jordan. And I didn't have a very strong relationship with MJ. But Kobe wanted to know what was all the intricate talking and trash talking and moves that were going on between MJ and I. 
what did you do? Like, what were your game plans? What was this? I was like, man, this is that black cat. There was no answer for him, man. We tried this, we tried that. That black cat was doing this and that. And I'm thinking to myself, what does this kid want to know about all this MJ talk for? There's only one black cat. You know, I, kept, cause I referred to call Michael, Michael Jordan or Jordan. I always called him the black cat. Black cat was, you know, we were doing this and I'm talking to Kobe. And I'm like, Kobe. He's like, you know what? You know what? You better get ready for the caramel cat because he's coming. <laughs> so before the black mama, before the black mama, his nickname was the caramel cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> this young 17 year old, I'm talking about the greatest ever. He says, You're going to refer to me as the Caramel Cat. That's how much confidence he had back then. This is like one year into it. He's like, Well, you better get, forget the black cat. You better get ready for the Caramel Cat because he's coming. <laughs> and I thought about it. I'm like, Fast forward two or three years later, it was 2 1. And game four, you mentioned. You fouled out. You already had 50 and 25. Great. That's a loose ball foul on Shaq. That'll be number six. What a big play. Three years later in the NBA Finals, that same move that I was showing him in my step back, he hit in game three after Shaq fouled out. Reggie Miller, the marquee matchup we talked about. Look at Reggie Miller squaring him up. These two guys played one-on-one -on -one all summer in L.A. Kobe takes it between his leg. He pulls it back, hits the jumper, and then sort of gives it, you know, take your time. Everything's cool. As he's running down the court, passing me on the button, says, you never should have showed me that step back. I'm going to kill this young kid. I'm going to kill this young kid. Uh, I heard a story about early on in your career. You wore him. Obviously, you've been wearing him since the 12th grade. When you played against Kobe, did you wear his shoes or did you wear a different shoe? So, so early on, I remember, I remember who said something to me. Uh, I want to, I want to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Vince if you remember this. I remember Vince. Vince was like, when you play against Kobe, did you wear his shoes? I'm like, no, I, I haven't yet. Why? Nah, you. You know, supposed to wear my you know, opponent, opponent's shoe, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so next time we played cold, I wore some Jordans. The wrong fucking bag I should have did. As soon as I walked <laughs> on the court, as soon as I walked on the court, Cole was like, oh, that's what we doing, motherfucker? And didn't say nothing to me the rest of the game. Right? Hey, hey, you just <laughs> sounded so much like him right there when he said that. That's what we doing, my yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. sounded just like Kobe right there, dude. That's crazy as hell. He I'm was he was off you, huh? He was off and oh, he man, played bush your ass, ass too. What? Man. <laughs> and that game, I swear to God, you can find a game too, bro. I remember I had hit one of somebody hit a shot, put us up like one. This, they called a timeout in front of our bench. This motherfucker walked past our bench. I was in high and said, you left me too much time. Mm. Came out, hit the fucking game with it, right? Mm. So I was like, man, so after the game, I talked to him. He was like, like, damn, man, my bad. You know, blah, blah, blah. That's what's up. That's a, that's a crazy ass story. That's what's up. But yeah, that's I, don't what think, doing, yeah I don't think I never yeah. told that. Yeah. Yeah, nah, but I, 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 I swear to God that was him when you said it because he didn't said that plenty yeah. of times. That shit was crazy. Man.